Beatrice, Liam, and Lucas. Today is your first birthday. It, It has, has been, been one whole year full of miracles and answered prayers. prayers. Daddy and Mommy want to share with you boys what a unique and special story you both have. Let's start from the very beginning. When Mommy found out she was pregnant, she booked Daddy to go skydiving. And as he was landing, there was a huge sign that read, Ate Kaya is promoted to Big Sister. Your daddy was in tears, both from disbelief and from happiness. Mommy had severe endometriosis, which makes conceiving difficult for most women. Our doctor even told us that we were very lucky to even have conceived one child, your Ate Kaya, given how severe Mommy's case was. But on the month that Mommy turned 34, God surprised us with another pregnancy. And the even bigger surprise was that there was not one, but two heartbeats. May 6, 2020 is one day we will never forget. Because mommy had some bleeding the day before, she had to undergo an emergency C-section. You boys were only 27 weeks. We didn't understand initially, but it was only after giving birth and speaking with the doctors that we knew why it was meant for you boys to come out that day. We found out that one of the placentas detached from mommy's uterus. This means that the supply of nutrients and oxygen to one of you was cut off. We could have lost you that day. We also found out that mommy's lining of the uterus was paper thin, which put her at risk for uterine rupture if we waited any longer. Liam, when, when you, came you came out, out of, of mommy's, mommy's tummy, tummy you, you immediately, immediately cried, which assured us that you were breathing and that you were okay. Daddy, Daddy and mommy, mommy were, were so, so relieved that, that we ended, ended up crying tears of joy. But Lucas, the doctors had a difficult time getting you out of mommy's tummy. You were not crying. And we heard the doctor say words like, resuscitate. So our tears of joy turned into tears of fear. Daddy held mommy's hand very tight and we both started crying while praying for your life. But again, God heard our prayers. You were both delivered safely. Liam at 11.10 a.m. weighing 2.6 pounds and Lucas 4 minutes after at 11.14 a.m. weighing 2.5 pounds. We still remember the first time we saw you boys. You were both inside an incubator with a blue light on and we could hardly see your faces. Both your eyes were covered. You had the tiniest baby hats on and had multiple tubes and wires attached to your body. Your skin were translucent, and you boys were just so fragile looking. And if mommy were to be completely honest, she didn't want to touch nor look at you that time. She was so scared that if she looked at you and touched you, she would fall in love even more. And she didn't want to feel that if we were going to end up losing you. She felt so broken and scared during a time when she was supposed to feel so much joy and excitement. We spent three long months in the NICU. Let me tell you boys that the NICU was a different world. Nobody was exaggerating when they told us it would be a roller coaster ride in there. This is where daddy and mommy learned how to be resilient and strong for you both. This place brought a complicated sense of joy and pain in ways that we never imagined. Here, we celebrated every little milestone like being able to move from an incubator to a normal crib or being able to wean from a CPAP to a nasal cannula. We celebrated and documented every ounce of weight you boys gained. Every day was a new day in the NICU and we always had to brace ourselves for what was to come that day. It felt like there was a new diagnosis each time we visited. A brain bleed. A hole in your heart. A concerning spot in your eye. Abnormal labs. It was one after, after the, the other. other. There were also endless procedures that had to be done. Blood transfusions. Central line insertions. 
repeated, repeated blood work, work the, the list went, went on. There were times when we would receive a call from your doctor saying that the things are improving only to be followed by a call 15 minutes later that you boys aren't looking good and that they were worried. This would make us rush to the hospital in the middle of the night because we weren't sure if you boys would make it to the next day. Sometimes we would even spend the night in the NICU because we knew that every hour was a miracle that you boys were still with us. It was physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally draining. We thought that was the worst of it, but it wasn't. Lucas, your sodium levels started rising to dangerous levels. Your doctors kept giving additional water to correct these levels, and this chase went on for weeks and weeks. The doctors were very worried about you, and they couldn't figure out what was causing it. The diagnosis of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, or NDI, came up, and they started treating your case as this. This is very different from the diabetes that causes elevated blood sugar. NDI is a disorder of the kidneys, which affects fluid balance and is very rare in neonates like you. Your doctor played catch-up with the water they needed to give you, and you would get pricked three or four times a day because they needed to keep a close eye on your sodium levels. This again went on for weeks and weeks, and it took a team of specialists to figure out what was going on. Finally, a genetic testing was done to confirm the diagnosis. You had a genetic mutation, which was the first ever documented in the whole world's database. So none of your doctors knew exactly how this disease would act. But they did tell us that most genetic disorders are lifelong. It is a very rare disorder, and genetics is not usually the overall cause. But if it is a genetic cause, then 90% are the X-linked type. And because there's a boy, that's what we're going for the most common. There is a recessive one also, which if they don't get an answer on the X-linked gene, then they'll go ahead and test the recessive gene. Our hearts sank because this meant our lives would be changed but more painfully, how this disease would change yours. There's very little known about NDI, but we spent days researching. You boys were fighting a hard battle, and we were fighting alongside you. We want you boys to know that during this hard time, you had a battalion of prayer warriors and covered you in prayers. And we did this every single night, no matter how busy everyone was. We vividly remember one drive to the hospital. Daddy and mommy were talking about all our worries, questions, fears. We pleaded to God for a miracle. We promised him that we would share your story if only he would heal you both. Then in tears, we also told God that we would accept his plan for us even if it isn't what we want. We surrendered it all to God on this drive. It was difficult, painful, and scary, but we meant it. Better days came. We were allowed to help with your cares and got to change your diapers and give you baths. We read you books and saw you open your eyes for the first time. The best days were when we would be able to hold you skin to skin. When the nurses would put you in our chests, your heart rates would start to normalize, your breathing would stabilize, and your oxygen levels would rise up. And when we would feed you, you boys would show off and finish the entire bottle in so little time. We knew that you boys wanted us to take you home, where there wouldn't be constant beeping sounds or needle pricks. Home where daddy and mommy would be there to pick you up each time you'd cry. We dreamt of that day each time we'd visit. Slowly, you boys hit your NICU milestones. Your IVs and tubes were taken out one by one. Your brain bleeds went away. The holes in your hearts closed. Your weight gains became constant. You breathed on your own. Your name spoke everything about you. Liam, you're our strong-willed warrior. 
The doctors and nurses would always say you were just cruising along, winning over every obstacle that came your way. Lucas, your name means bright and shining. You were famous in the NICU for being the feisty one. With all your strength, you would pull out all the tubes on your face and kick those who would prick your heels. Hello. It's a big day for Liam. So it's his 91st day in the NICU and he's finally getting discharged. Bye. <laughs> This was also the day that we finally got to take off our masks and kiss you for the very first time. Because Lucas was still being treated for NDI, he had to be left behind. He also had to undergo another procedure, a G-tube insertion, in order to give the extra water he needed. Daddy and Mommy had to divide ourselves between staying home and visiting the hospital. It was on day 103 that Lucas was finally ready to go home. Hi! Hello, Lucas. Today is... What day is it today? It's August 16. And 100... How many days? 103 days. After 103 days, Lucas, we're gonna pick you up. Finally. And make you... We're so excited to have you home. We're finally gonna be complete. Everyone's waiting for you. So excited. Woke up early this morning for this big day. See you soon, Lucas. Bye, Lucas. We love you. We will never forget the last time we stepped out of the NICU doors and walked out of UCI. We will also never forget the overwhelming number of people who shared our happiness and excitement that day. You boys were finally home. Your big sister didn't really know what was going on, but it was obvious that she loved you both right away. The months that followed weren't easy. Our calendars were full. You had physical therapy weekly and multiple doctor's appointments bi-weekly. Luca still needed blood tests regularly and was maintained on several medications. Daddy and Mommy were tired. Because we were working and also had your 13-month-old sister to take care of. But God always made sure to watch over us. He gave us family who took turns to stay with us and friends who scheduled shifts to babysit so we could rest. This was how we made it through. We kept the faith and never got tired of praying. And this was when miracles started unfolding. On your sixth month, you boys had a high-risk evaluation where a panel of specialists assessed how you were developing in all aspects. All your results came out normal, some even exceeding what's expected of you at that age. Everyone was so impressed, given that you boys were born extremely prematurely. Lucas's sodium level stayed within normal limits, and all his medications were discontinued. We're able to go to the beach where he sweats without getting dehydrated, he no longer needs extra water and can now feed normally. His doctor is confident that we can remove his feeding tube in a few months. You turn one today and you boys are thriving. You have defied the odds and daddy and mommy are in awe of all that you were and all that you are. Lucas, your condition was supposed to be lifelong. It's embedded in your genes. But God is truly greater than anything. He makes the impossible possible. He is the one in charge, and He is our divine healer. It's a miracle that you have overcome your disease. Liam, Liam and, Lucas, and Lucas, your story, story is God's answer to our prayers. prayers. And, and this is our way, way of fulfilling, fulfilling our promise, promise to share it. it. We hope you know that whatever life puts in your paths, you, you will overcome, overcome it. We hope you enjoy life and never, never take, it take it for granted. And we hope you grow up trusting God's plans and always believing in miracles. We love you both so much. 
love daddy and mommy. Yeah. <laughs>